Hey, in today's video, guys, I'm gonna show you the easiest DIY flooring I've ever installed in my entire life. Check this out. And no, it's not vinyl. This is hardwood flooring. It's an engineered hardwood floor that installs like a dream. And it has a lot more value in your home than if you put in vinyl. And it costs about the same money. No, this video is not sponsored, all right? I just happened to stumble across the greatest product on earth. Listen, if you like the idea of having a really easy to install hardwood floor for your house, give this video a thumbs up, watch the tutorial, but I also I want you to put in the comments what you've been planning to install. Have you been shopping for vinyl and this is maybe changing your mind? Or are you gonna go look for carpet or some other surface? I'd like to know what your project's gonna look like. By the end of this video, I'm gonna guarantee you, you're gonna seriously consider buying this floor. And as a bonus, at the end of this video, I'm also gonna show you my best installation secret why I install the flooring before I put in my doors and my trim. All right, we're gonna go through the process so that you can get your house to look like you had a professional come and do your installation instead of doing it yourself. All right guys, I'm doing this video today because we've got a new product on the market. We're gonna show you all step by step how to install it. But before we do, let's just differentiate between all the different flooring products out there. You've got products that get nailed or screwed or set in thin set. And then you've got DIY projects. Most DIYers out there are not tackling advanced technology and you're looking for a floating floor. And you, traditionally your, your options were like an MDF laminate, right? And these came in the price point, started at $1. You can get them as expensive as five or six, but you could enter the market at $1 a square foot. Then they came along with vinyl, the SPC core. You can put this stuff anywhere. It can't be damaged by water. And this kind of came in at around the two to three dollar entry mark and it comes up to five dollars a square foot as well. Of course, you know, no matter what kind of flooring they're selling, they're gonna give you an option to spend all kinds of money. Here's the newest product on the market. This is engineered hardwood DIY click lock flooring. Huh? Yeah, it goes in really super simple. It's an actual quarter inch of finished oak laminated on two layers of plywood. The bottom is curved and check this out. Look at that flexibility. You're not gonna find that anywhere else in the hardwood world. So if you're a DIYer and you've got an older house and it has a little bit of inconsistency in the floor, you can install this product, it'll follow the contour. We're gonna go through step by step. This stuff enters the marketplace at four bucks a square foot in the United States. All right, now I've got a supplier, full disclosure, but they're only able to ship to Canadians right now. We'll see what that is later on. But at $4 a square foot, you can now install hardwood in your home, click lock with hardly any tools at all. Think about it. Get an amazing looking finish, increase the value of your property. You can do it yourself. And it's only about another $100 for an entire room more than vinyl or laminate. I think this is a game changer. And after today, you're not gonna ever bother buying one of these products again, because this is money in the bank. Now, as far as this flooring goes, I know I'm a little ahead of myself. We have lots of taping to do, but it's okay. We're gonna use site protection and you can go out of order with your construction because one of the benefits of doing the floor first is now I get to install all my door jams and all my doors and all my baseboards on top of the flooring and it avoids a lot of silly little trims and a lot of gaps and caulking later on. So bear with me. But step one, when you're doing a floating floor, is you wanna make sure that your, your subfloor is actually really installed well. So take a look at your subfloor. So make sure that it is screwed and not nailed, because don't forget, subfloors will have deflection. When you step in between the floor joists, the board will push up on the nails and start squeaking against what? the nail. So in order to avoid that problem, all you gotta do, screw down your subfloor nice and tight so nothing's moving around. Step two is all about making sure it's clean. I like to just use a great big towel wipe my floor down. Remember, floating floors always have a little bit of movement. And if you have dust underneath your floor assembly, every time you step, it'll come foof, fire into the room and you'll be forever sitting in the dirt. <laughs> step three is all about figuring out where you're gonna start. Now, I've got a laser level here and I'm just gonna lay it up against my wall and identify, I can, wow, that's amazing. You wanna have a straight line that you can figure out with. Once you know that you've got a starting point that you're happy with, you can move forward. If the wall is bowed, you might have to even do a little bit of contouring on your first couple of boards. You wanna make sure you're about as snug as you can get to get started. 
and that your baseboards are going to finish and cover the gap. Step four is all about underlayment. Now, I've done videos before and people have commented and asked me, where did you get that underlayment? The truth is, there are a lot of companies out there making a good quality underlayment. It doesn't matter about the brand. It matters about this. Most of the time it has a vapor barrier. Sometimes it's this tin foil. Sometimes it's plastic. What they all have in common is they are about a three millimeter EVA foam. Very, very dense. This stuff is amazing ability to handle impact noise and reduce sound transmission from conversation from one room to the next. And that's what you're looking for when you're buying underpad. It's not about um, the brand, it's about the product. This stuff comes about 50 bucks for 200 square feet. Now listen, you're not gonna find this kind of product at Home Depot. They sell their own underpad and they're making an absolute fortune off of it and it doesn't work as anywhere near as well. So make sure you Google for a flooring supply store wholesaler near you and you can find out where to pick something like this up for yourself. Or you can always use our The Corner website and that link is in the video description. If you're in Canada, they have a really good EVA underpad on that website as well. So like with uh, other hardwood products, this is all milled specifically. When they see an imperfection in the wood, they just cut it and mill it. So it comes various sizes. So the better quality of the supplier, the longer the pieces are gonna get, okay? Like, that's one piece of flooring. I like to do the first row in the room with some of the longest pieces you can find to help keep it straight. So, we're just gonna lay this over here. First piece is now installed. And it's a click lock, so we're just gonna set it flush and then drop it, okay? And we'll worry about our angle later. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put together about three rows and then position it according to that laser level line that we dropped earlier, just to make sure that everything is perfect. Let's just set it in place. <laughs> and then ah, wiggle it into position. That's installed. This is almost ridiculously easy, man. <laughs> this is crazy. This is hardwood without tools. You want to make sure you're always staggering your joints. You don't want them any more than six inches close to each other. That'll help keep everything nice and square. You won't get unsightly gaps down the road. Okay, now here we go. This is the only thing you need to know is how to cut and measure, all right? And you don't want to get tricky like this. The best system is you take the tongue, you turn it around. So now you're measuring by putting the finished board up against the wall and then measure back to where it meets. Take a little bit off, make your mark, you cut it, and then you flip it around to install it. But just, just hammering both opposite sides down really locks that groove in incredibly well. We're gonna be installing a door jam. And that's part of the beautiful thing about DIY flooring. If you put the flooring down before all your doors, everything looks great when you're done, right? Yeah. Perfect every time. So as a DIYer, one of the secrets to success when you're doing your flooring is get the first three rows done. All that locking joint is gonna help really straighten out the flooring. And then take a piece of your baseboard that you're gonna be installing when you're done. I love this stuff because it's three quarter wide and it gives you a really nice profile. You're gonna to wanna to slide it along your wall. And if there's a gap, just adjust your floor until every angle, everywhere, the flooring is covered with the baseboard, okay? It's the entire secret, right there. And as long as you do it in that order, flooring and then baseboards, you're gonna be having a gorgeous look. Now before you install your baseboards, make sure you paint them first. Because then when you go and install it, you can brad nail way up here, okay? And then just do your touch-ups and a little touch-up paint. You never have to use a brush down by the flooring. That'll make sure your flooring looks absolutely perfect and you're never gonna get those touch-ups. Pain in the butt. Once it's in place, you just take a drill and you can throw in a couple of screws where you know you're nice and tight to the wall. Okay, and that'll help keep everything nice and square. So the rest of the day, you're building the rest of the floor, it's not moving around on you. Now when you're all done, come back and remove the screws, because they're gonna be sitting a little proud of the surface. 
before you put your baseboards on. And the reason I do this is because if you're working along and you come to a place and you're working around a door frame or a closet and your floor is shifted a little bit or pushed too far or twisted, you're gonna get to the other end of the room, just go to put your baseboards on and go, oh, you're gonna have a gap somewhere because things are out of alignment and it's too late then to move three or 400 pounds of flooring that's been cut around other obstacles. So get a couple screws in so you're holding it tight and then you're good to go until the very end of the project. At that point, you can pull the screws out and add your baseboard. One of the best techniques for doing your floor is to get all of the major square footage done and then come back and work on all your details. So for transitions at doors and stuff like that, it's not necessary to work on this right away. Let's get the most of the project finished and then we'll get to all the details at the end of the video and I'll show you all my secrets for finishing off. Now we're gonna start rolling out more underpad, laying more flooring down, it's cut and measure, it's pretty much basic and simple. Always making sure to constantly be cleaning, constantly be vacuuming, wiping the floor, inspecting, screwing down problem areas. It's all about the preparation. So once you get yourself repositioned, that you can maintain a clean space, you can get about 75% of the way. Clean all that and vacuum again and get all prepped up again. So it's a little redundant and boring, but trust me, if you take time with your preparation, it'll make all the difference in the world as well. This type of hardwood, doesn't have an expansion and contraction rate like typical hardwood. So it doesn't need to be uh, half an inch away from the floor with huge gaps. A little bit of gap is great. This has gr really a advanced technology, so it doesn't expand and contract like traditional hardwood. Because of these curves, it doesn't grow in, in different kind of humid climates. So if you have basic heating and air conditioning in your home, you're not gonna have a lot of dramatic growth, okay? So a little bit of space around posts and, for, and, and walls and corners is great. Quarter inch is plenty. You don't have to go overboard, all right? This stuff here looks like hardwood. It is hardwood, but it performs closer down the scale to like a vinyl flooring. It performs better than even a laminate, traditional MDF laminate. So don't be too concerned about leaving massive gaps around and using lots of shims. Just laying out the flooring and setting all your product on it will keep it from moving around and you'll be fine. So in some situations in your house, you're gonna to wanna to have the vapor barrier and you're gonna to wanna to have it sealed. Now most of these underlayments come with a little two-sided tape action, all right? So you can actually peel the tape back, lay it down on the existing, okay? And then it, you can just pull it and peel it, peel and stick and that's lovely. You can make a nice little vapor barrier there. And this is a great technique. You can actually install this on your concrete floor in your basement and put hardwood right on top. It's not recommended unless you have a newer house but if you have an older house, you can put in a subfloor system, put in the underpad, and then you can have hardwood in the basement as well. I know it's crazy, but because it's a lay down floating floor, and there's no fasteners, you don't have to worry about uh, affecting your subfloor system and your vapor barrier in your basement. So now you can have hardwood in the basement. Now, when we're getting into situations like this, if you want to just get the volume done first, you can always start off your you know, structure that's causing you an issue keep building, do the rest of the room. At the end of the day, we can come back and do all these little di different cuts. We've cut and measured this so it'll fit just fine. No, you didn't, Nate. You cut it short. I'm thinking baseboards. No? Yeah, you're thinking three inch baseboard, man. That's a hell of a baseboard. Like right now, I'm fine, but I got another half inch to go underneath. When you make a mistake, and you will, don't panic, just set it aside. You're gonna cut one side wrong. You can just make it a starter strip. Just cut the other side, set it at the other end, and keep it around so when you get to an opportunity to use it, you can cut it in. That way you might cut off a little bit more, but you don't have too much waste. Another secret to avoid waste, when you get to the other end of the, of the row, and let's say you need a six inch board, go grab something that's three or four feet. Cut the end for that one, and then you have a nice big board to start the next row with. Don't be afraid to cut the big ones because they can make it a lot easier to finish and start without having a bunch of little pieces at each end. Well, if you cut it long on purpose, you can always cut it again. Yes, sir. Nothing wrong with cutting it twice. Did it right that time. We also need to cut off the tongue. What the heck do I do here, buddy? Waiting for your dad to come and show you how to do it. I think you went a little too far Kay. ahead of me. So we took this opportunity to be able to show people at home something. Because it's a drop lock, the ends drop lock as well. So it's impossible to stick it in this way and get underneath. You might be able to wiggle something in here, but then you don't have the angle, okay? So resist the temptation to do this. Don't go around the corner and keep on going with drop lock systems. The only other option is to cut off that tongue 
drop it in place and allow the compression here and the baseboard to hold it all together. You can generally cheat and get away with that. And in this case, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Do, 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 do. Almost perfect every time. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, once you get going, measure and cut. A couple basic tools. You don't need to have a chop saw to do a floor like this. You can do it with a hand saw or a skill saw, a jigsaw. Just make sure you're using sharp blades so that uh, the tools work and you're not wasting your time. The uh, hardwood flooring also works with that laminate flooring crunching tool that I have. Ah, the crusher, the guillotine. So, you know, feel free if you got one of those, you can use that as well. Here's a quick trick. When you're finishing off a roll and you're going to start another one, nothing's ever cut square at the factory. So overlap them a couple inches, cut them at the same time together. And then your product will seam together really nice. As long as you don't step on it and move it all over the place like I just did. Okay. Okay, baby, here we go. I'm going to show you how to do this. Yes. Most of this floor I installed facing the other direction. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I was pushing it in. It's actually quite difficult. Once you have enough room and you can work from behind, it's easier to pull sure. and push. Okay, sure. so grab your board. Okay. okay, you want to slide it in the groove, nice and tall. Yep. Slide it over till you make contact here. Yep. And then start laying it down. Okay, and use your thumbs to to warp it to the contour of the floor. Wow. Okay. Now, this is a click lock, so this side might be higher. Okay. So make sure when you put it in, you're pushing it down, paying attention to those joints. Okay. There you go. Well, you Give fixed it. A shot. it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, high end up. Okay, let me just get a feel okay. for it. Yep. Okay, nice and tight okay. there. Now you okay. want to just pull it. Yeah, so you're, you're awfully quick to drop it down. You want to be careful of the lock. Okay. Okay, so when you're putting it down, pulling it towards you, making sure that this gets nice and tight, and then set it in place. Right? And then what happens because that happens? Yes. The next board is what locks mm -hmm. that joint together. Nice, nice. Okay? And at the end of the wall, wow, what holds it all flash. down is the baseboard. Sure. Piece of cake? Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I'm, uh, I'm going to go to the store. Uh, <gasps> you can finish off the rest of the room. Me <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm going to take, I don't mind taking the challenge, but. Uh... No, that's cool. I like hanging out with you. Ah. I'll let you do the metal parts and yeah. I'll do all the cuts at the end, okay? Okay. So the old goal is just trying to make sure that over the course of three or four boards, your joints don't line up and they're four to six inches apart. Okay. That's the goal. If you have to cheat a little bit here and there, it's okay. Yeah. But that, at least that way we don't end up having the like reoccurring joints everywhere. No, we don't want that. All right. So we have to open up an, another box already. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Like that was Okay, it. you want me to do it? Uh, well, I'll work with you. The way they package this, the yes. tape joint is actually on the underside of the wood. Oh, smart. So you don't risk uh, yeah. wrecking anything. Oh my gosh. I love the green in this wood. It's like so unique. You know how some flooring has like the same five different green impressions? Whereas this one's got like 20, I'm sure, or more. Well, a million, because there's no board the same. Well, okay. It's real wood. <laughs> yeah. Because you're right, because okay. the laminate and the vinyls all have like um, reoccurring pictures. Yeah. And uh, you don't get any of that problem here. Yeah. That's, oh, that's a nice long one. Well, that's, that Ooh. speaks to the quality of the product, right? Can I have a really short piece there, Ben? Thank you very much. All right, well, we're at that point where we're ready to put the next row of under pad down, but you can see I can't clean that floor properly until I can move my cutting station. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the cutting station over here. Now, we went into this project knowing we're going a little bit ahead of ourselves. We're gonna be doing carpentry, more mud, uh, hanging doors. So we are not going with a traditional dry sheathing paper or, or there's a uh, roofing cardboard paper. We're going with ram board on this one. This product here is just really thick. It's just the next level up in site protection, right? It's very, very rigid board. So we're gonna cover our floors with this product. Gives us a peace of mind that we can set tools on it and move around freely. And uh, we're still gonna have to use some element of care. When it comes time to doing major millwork and stuff, we'll probably bring in a couple sheets of plywood and put it on top of the floor. 
But for now, we're going to get the ram board down and then we'll move the saw, do another round of cleaning all over again, site protection and then clean, clean, clean. And then uh, another hour or so, we'll finish all this off. Piece of cake. Wait. Site protection. Huh? Is there really dense cardboard? Yeah. It also has uh, been treated so that if you put water on it, oh well, here. Let's, let's answer that question with a demonstration. Yeah. So ram board is really thick. It's also got a spill guard. It's been treated so water beads up. And it gives you lots of time to come by and clean that up. Or just wipe it in. It's not going to be a big deal. When you put this down, you put layer against layer and you tape the joints. You got a really nice protection layer. Make sure when you install it, you cut it short of where your baseboards are going to go. So you're not always fussing around after the fact. If we don't cover the last two edge, inches around the edge, we can always take time with the rag and wipe off any mud or paint or whatever hits there later. But you don't want it in the way of your finished carpentry. So I'm going to just take the time to finish off the rest of the room. Really? Well, Are you I'm, sure? Yeah, because you know, Ugh, you're, you're cute and all, but tired. I move faster alone. Yeah. So thanks oh. for coming. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow, uh -huh. I'm going to let you put the cardboard down. You can use the blue tape okay, to yeah. join the seams together. Sure. This is important. Don't use this on the floor. Well, I know, because it leaves behind the... Ah, uh, someone's been it, watching guess... some videos. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of green tape though for yeah. getting all the ends. Mm -hmm. And then um, I got meetings in the morning, but then afterwards I'm going to be up here doing my taping. And you got meetings now. I so got meetings now. There's a lot going on. Yeah. High five. Members are going to love us. Life must go on. When they figure it out. Mm. Okay. Kay. Kisses or am I too hot and sweaty? No, never. You. <laughs> yeah, I know. I disgusted myself there. See you, baby. Bye. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Now we're all set up at the other end of the room. I have to clean and prep and start my process over again, but I only have one third of it left. Now listen, this is all done in one day. It's only 1.30 in the afternoon, and we're taking the time to film and move everything back and forth. Trust me, this is the most convenient flooring you can ever install. And just for a point of reference, this flooring costs a dollar less a square foot than life-proof vinyl at Home Depot. Think about it. If you're Canadian, this is a hell of a deal. If you're American, I'm so sure that somebody is importing this for you. Take a look around, them, see what's on the market. Remember, one of the benefits of doing this kind of flooring is it's click lock. If you make a mistake, you unclick it. You don't have hardware fasteners and major issues to go with and risk of damaging your floor while you're fixing a board. It's an awesome product. And when you go to sell your house, you can say, I have hardwood everywhere, because you do. You're not lying, it's an engineered hardwood floor, but it's just engineered to make it easy for DIY installation. Gotta love this. All right, one of the most popular questions I've been getting about flooring videos is how do you do the end row? What's the secret to getting that scribed and cut properly? We're gonna show you right now. So first we're gonna take a piece that we're going to be cutting and we're gonna line it up with the existing flooring right in the same spot. And then I'm gonna take another piece of wood that's the same length basically. I'm gonna set it on top and I'm gonna push it until it makes contact with the wall. Okay, then you're going to take your marker and you're going to trace that. Now I know there's a little bit of a, a tongue here and the goal here because we don't have baseboards yet is not to make it fit so snug that there's no expansion contraction room. So by doing this we're actually going to end up with about a one eighth of a gap, maybe even a little bit more depending on how generous you are when you cut that line. And there you go, now you're scribed. Now all you have to do is you can take whatever saws you have available. You can use a skill saw. Because this area here is going to be garbage now, you can actually screw that to another piece of wood or a sheet of plywood or to your workbench and you can just use your, your uh, circular saw and you can rip that off or you can use a table saw. Now I'm going to do the whole room. I have a table saw so obviously I'm going to use the good tool. But uh, in case you don't have a table saw, why don't I just show you how to use the skill saw anyway. Now the reason I love this table is it has a roller. Okay, so what I'm going to do guys is I'm just going to set up my saw. I'm going to hold the, the plate with my thumb and this and I'm going to bring them together until I'm in the meat. And then I'm just going to hold the saw still and pass the wood past the blade. And kind of create an inverted table saw effect. Okay, here we go. The secret to keeping safe here is don't move the saw, move the wood.
and that works really well. Or we can just use an actual table saw. So my, my saw line is actually, my wall is pretty straight, but my room is crooked, so it's pretty straightforward. So what I did is I just drew an extra line here, because your situation might be different. You might have a bow on your wall, or something else going on that's strange. So I'm going to just show you a table saw technique for cutting around a bend. Of course, the blade is 10 inches wide. So if the curve, <laughs> you can see the problem here. You can't be forcing this, because what will happen is it'll bind and it'll throw the wood back at you. It's quite dangerous. So what we're going to do is we're going to start here, we're going to follow a straight line, cut all the way through, and then we're just going to do a couple of different cuts. And you, you... No break, eh? At all. That's how you save a hundred bucks. You don't get a saw with a break. Anyway, you can see you can start to curve a line. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, it's flooring. You're going to still use baseboard of some sort. But I just thought I'd show you that. Otherwise, when you're working this, you're doing freehand. The idea is you set this up where the point is. You want to look down your line. And you want to draw that line right down the blade to see it go all the way through, okay? Okay, here we go. All right, now you'll notice when I was cutting, I was coming off my line a little bit. Instead of twisting or turning, I just backed it up and gave myself a little bit extra space and then readjusted my, my, my approach, okay? That's a safer way to use the saw than just trying to twist it around. The bleed is too wide to treat it like a jigsaw. All right, let's go see how this works. I love these moments, Max. It's my opportunity. People can actually find out if I know what the hell I'm doing or not. There we go. Oh yeah, baby. That's awesome. Now the last thing you need to know is every floating floor is going to have a little bit of bounce in the last piece. Same with it near the uh, doorways. So when you go in and install your baseboard, don't, don't work way back here. Get right up and close and personal. See that? Put your weight on the floor, set in your base, and then you can attach it. And that'll get a nice pinning effect around the room. You want to put your fastener through the floor into the subfloor. Just want to get the base right and nice and in contact. It'll still expand and contract underneath, but it'll get rid of that bounciness, and then you won't have gaps opening and closing over time. It'll also make sure that if there is any dust trapped under the floor, it doesn't have an easy access back into the room. Because if I install like this, and then I step on it, now there's a huge gap, and dirt can whoosh, get sucked into the room. So always put the weight on it when you're nailing. And we're good to go. Now, hey guys, and if you like the idea of putting this kind of flooring in your bedroom or in your basement, and you really appreciate us bringing you this information, hit the like button. Don't forget to share this video with other people that you know that are remodeling their houses. This is gonna be a real big game changer. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can see the rest of the project that we're doing up here in my master bedroom. All right, so here we are. I promise to show you my secret to how I do all this kind of thing. It's really not that complicated. All you've got to do is pre-paint your trim before you install it. Now, you take a tool like this and you cut off your shims. Mark your trim for where you want to cut the joint. You just cut your trim. And then you install it. Perfect every time. The reason this works so good is you never have to worry about installing your floor and undercutting all your jams and trim and making a mess of things. So you get clean cuts that are pre-painted. You never have to bring your brush near the floor to paint your trim when you're done. That is the secret and it's money in the bank. And if you like learning great secrets about DIY renovations, 
click the link up here. We've got another video to show you because you might not want to go with the hardwood. Maybe you want to go with the vinyl. We've got a great video showing you all the tips and tricks for that too. Cheers.